right, gang, welcome back. We talked last time about how to write your resume. So by now, hopefully, you've got your resume whipped into shape and you're getting ready to go to the job fair. We're excited about this. We're going to get an internship, a co-op, or maybe even a full-time job. So how do I work this job fair? What do I do before I go? So this is how to prepare for the job fair. I'll do another video after this one on how to work the job fair while you're actually there, but this is getting ready for the job fair, okay? So you've got a career fair at your school, you've got a job fair at your school, or you're going to a conference maybe that has a big job fair. How do I get ready for that, okay? So I've got some, I got my top kind of four tips here on the board for you, okay? Number one, you have to decide what it is you wanna be when you grow up, or at least have some kind of idea, right? You need to know, do I want to go into aerospace? Do I want to go into the medical industry? Do I want to go into oil and gas? Do I want to go into, you know, uh, manufacturing? Do I want to go into construction? What makes me happy? Because what you want to do, life is too short to go to a job that you don't enjoy going to every day. So you have to decide kind of at some point in your life what it is you want to be. And I want you to get the job that you want to have, not the, not the only job that you can find and that's just what you got to go do, right? I'd rather you put some thought into this and went and got the job that you really wanted to because if you want to do a job, you're gonna do a better job when you go to work every day. So you gotta ask yourself, where do I see myself in five years? Where do I see myself in 10 years? And I know for a lot of students, it's hard to look that far in, into the future, but you gotta at least have some kind of plan to get there and just not let it you know, fall on your head. So you gotta have some kind of, uh, some kind of idea of what you wanna do. Because all of those kind of companies will be at the job fair. Construction companies, medical companies, aerospace companies, oil and gas companies, right? And you're like, ah, and there's too many people there. I know at our university, the last job fair was over 250 companies. So there's no way to talk to all of them. So you have to kind of narrow the field down of what you're going to really be targeting, right? So you want to target a specific market, specific companies, uh, and you want to get prepared for that. So, number two, this is the most important thing. Do your research, okay? If your university is going to have a job fair or if a conference is going to have a job fair or whatever, typically somewhere there is a list on the internet, on the website, something uh, telling you who is coming, okay? So our university has one that tells you who is coming. And it'll also list some details about that company, okay? First thing you got to do is see who is coming and uh, who it is you want to talk to. <laughs> okay. So the job fair is there for a limited amount of time. So you just have so much time and there's a whole bunch of competition there. So you're going to have to wait in lines. Okay. So you want to get there early and you want to have those companies that you, that are the, I got to talk to these guys. You got to know who those are. Okay. And so you got to know who's coming to the job fair and then out of those coming, who's my top 10 companies. Okay. Who are the ones that I really got to talk to? Because I want to get there early. I want to get those checked off. I want to make sure that I talk to those, right? Um, what do those companies do? The worst thing in the world that a, for a recruiter is when a student walks up and they say, Hi, uh, are you interested in coming to work for us? And they go, Yeah, uh, what do y'all do? Next. Okay. You should go up there and you should already have some things researched, some things to do there. Right? If you've got a company that you want to go to see, let's say you want to go to work for uh, IBM. Is IBM even still in business? Yeah. If you want to go to work for a company like Dell Computer, right? Then what you would do is go on Dell's website and look at their careers page. Somewhere on their website, they're going to have a careers page. And that's going to tell you about the current positions that they're trying to hire for or internships that they're trying to hire for. Know what, what it is they do, what it is they build, 
and then what it is that, uh, that you're interested in. Because if you go up and you say, hey, I've been checking out your website. I see some things that are really interesting to me. You've got a, a level one design engineer opening and I, am, I think I'm the perfect fit for that job and I'm really interested in that job. Do you know about that? Can, we, can, I, can, I, can you tell me more about that? Because they're always gonna be more interested in you interviewing them versus them interviewing you. And so if you do that research, my, one of my favorite things is uh, Texas Instruments always comes to our job fair. And Texas Instruments, what are students familiar with? calculators, right? And they go up to Texas Instruments, y'all build calculators, right? Well, it turns out that they don't actually, they're all outsourced to China and they only, that's only about less than 5% of their business, right? 95% of their business is totally different from that. And they're like, yeah, we build calculators, but that's not really what we do. And so know what the company does and where you want to go to work, you know, wh where are they located? Because the big thing is important is where am I going to go to work? Right? If I have to move to some town where I don't have any family, I don't have any friends, I don't, you know, if your people are the only important thing you have. So you want to be in a place where it's going to, you're going to be happy, right? So the next thing is, will the company be taking resumes? Now, strangely enough, you'd think everybody takes resumes, right? No. A lot of companies, what they do, number one, you've got to go to that website for your university or wherever, the conference, and a lot of companies are signing up interviews before the job fair even starts. And so if you just show up at the job fair and that's the first time they've ever heard about you, that you're probably not going to get an interview. So some people don't, they already have their interview scheduled before you ever get there. Number two, a lot of them say, have you filled out an application online on our website? Because we're not taking resumes at the, at the job fair. All of that goes through our HR department back at the home office. You have to sign up before you ever get here. What? I didn't know. Okay. It's because you didn't do your research. So not every company accepts resumes at the job fair. A lot do. But very specific ones, they don't. They accept it only online. Some of the aerospace companies only accept resumes online and not at the job fair. So. That's something that's very important that you do that resume or that resume, that research before you ever get started. I can't tell you how important this is. So for your top 10 companies, you need to be looking at their careers page, seeing what's available, seeing what they do, and knowing that stuff. The, or the recruiter at the job fair is going to be way more interested in you if you know about them. That means that, hey, you care, you put in your, your time your effort, and um, you're just not just walking up on a whim and say, hey, let's, I want to go to work for you. That just that doesn't go good, okay? So there you go, research. That is so, so important, y'all. And, and so many people at the job fair will, have, will not have done that. But we will, won't we, okay? Number three, prepare your elevator spe speech, okay? I have students in my office all the time. They're coming there and they're like, will you look at my resume? Yeah, I look at it. And then, uh, then they say, I'm, I'm nervous about going to the job fair. And I say, let me ask you one question, okay? Tell me about yourself, right? You've got, you're at the job fair. The recruiter's there. Probably the number one question they're going to ask you. As soon as you walk up, you, you show them your resume or whatever, and they say, hey, yeah, tell me about yourself. Uh... You should ask my mom. She knows about me, right? No, you need to have this rehearsed. You need to have this practice. What is your elevator speech? It needs to be no more than two minutes long. No more, okay? And what you want to do is you want to get a roommate, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, whatever, right? And, and then sit down at the table and say, all right, tell me about yourself. Okay, well, my name is Bob Johnson, and, I, and I'm a, you know, my, I've always wanted to be um, whatever it is, right? And you have... You have to give yourself a speech to them that tells about your experience, your education, uh, and why you want to go to work for that company two minutes, okay? So just kind of a, hey, how you doing? Here's what's going on, okay? No more than two minutes. And practice that. I had a student went to a conference, and he had this ready to go, right? He wanted to go to work for Boeing. We come out of the conference, and I told my student, I said, hey, that guy right over there, that's the head recruiter for Boeing right there. He ran over to that guy, introduced himself. Hi, my name's Jack. I, I, I'm a student at blah, 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 and I you know, want to go to work for you. I've always wanted to go and, and gave him his speech, and the guy gave him an internship at Boeing on the spot because he was 
calm, collected, confident, and had his speech prepared. And he had an opportunity, took advantage of it, and went to Seattle all summer long and did an internship at Boeing. So you got to have that prepared. It's, it's more important than your resume, right? Um, so in that elevator speech, why you're interested in them specifically? Why are you interested in going to work in aerospace? Why are you interested in the biomedical industry? Why are you interested in oil and gas, right? Um, that, that passion for that industry is going to give them, they're going to look at you differently. So that's going to help your chances, okay? And then finally, what do you do different from everybody else? Remember, this is a competition. You go to the job fair, there's a thousand people there. They're trying to get that job too. They're trying to beat you out of it, right? What separates you from all the rest of that crowd? What's different about you for this job that you want, right? Well, I've had an internship in this industry before and I've had experience in here. My parents have always done been in this industry and I've always wanted to do this since I was a little kid, right? So there's something different that separates you from everybody else. And you want to have that and uh, you want to be able to tell them that. Okay, so that elevator speech, that's something that you should prepare before you ever go over there, and that's very important. And then finally, is kind of the, the physical, tangible things that you should prepare, and we should know that already, right? You should, have your, you should have your resume already done, and if you don't know how to do that, go back and watch the last video series on how to write our engineering resume, and there's some tips and tricks in there to kind of get your resume up to snuff and get it polished, okay? Number one, you should have yourself something like this. It's very professional, right? Not a t-shirt like this. We'll have another whole video on how to dress for success at the job fair. And I'll, I'll talk to you about all those kind of things, okay? But you should have yourself something like this, a little leather portfolio, right? It's pretty simple, little portfolio. It has a place for business cards inside of it. It has a place for your resumes. And it's very clean and very professional, right? Versus just having a handful of paper, you know? You want to have something like this, a really nice little portfolio, okay? So I think this is very important for you to have, a little black leather portfolio. You should have your resume all polished up, right? Here is a resume on white paper. This is old Bob Johnson's resume there, okay? And here is one on um, kind of a beige or tan paper. So you want to have something, this is not, this is not copy paper, okay? This is resume paper. It's a little bit of heavier bond paper. This is what you want. Uh, it's a little bit, it's way more professional. And it just says, I care, okay? It doesn't say, I just, I just printed this out the last minute. Here, take this, okay? So you want to have that and you want, and I want, don't, I wouldn't go crazy. Don't, don't be doing it on pink or neon orange or something, you know, a uh, white, or a beige, or maybe a light gray, okay? And I, I don't think I would do anything else. Um, for the girls out there, I think you're okay with a with a, a, a maybe a light blue or a, a different, and it's okay because if they are taking resumes and they have a stack of resumes and yours is on a little bit different color paper than everybody else that had white, um, then they, it's gonna be easier to find your resume in that stack. It just makes it a little more unique. And so that's something you wanna, wanna think about. So. You'll want to have, you know, as many companies as you want to see, right? I'd have resumes for all those companies, and then I'd have an extra 10 just in case. So, you know, I would go over there with no less than 20 resumes uh, and, and maybe more if you're, if you're feeling confident. And then uh, we'll, we're going to talk next about, about once you're there, once you're at the job fair and you're walking around with your briefcase, your, your portfolio, and you're handing out resumes, how do I talk to somebody? Um, how do I approach them? What do I do with their business card? All that kind of stuff. So uh, stay tuned for the next video, and I hope this helps, and I'll see you then.